everyone and welcome to the Oakley Roots YouTube channel. In today's tutorial, we're going over a pattern that boggles my mind. This might be the most popular pattern on the internet. And I'm not, like I know it's like, Jess, you're exaggerating. No, no, no. There is a Facebook group, guys, that I'm a member of. There's a Facebook group dedicated to just this pattern. Just this pattern with over 16,000 members. What? Today, we are going over the Necessary Clutch Wallet from Emmeline Bags. This is like a superstar. I'm kind of like, I'm kind of like nervous in its presence because it's so famous. I just can't even get over it. And not only do people love this pattern, they love to make it, they love to sell it. So many people have made over a hundred of these because they're that popular. Now, I do love the pattern. I'll tell you that I do love the pattern and I and I am to the point now where I look at fabric differently because now when I look at fabric, I'm like, oh, that would look so good on the flap of the NCW. Just so you know, NCW is what all the people in the know call it because necessary clutch wallet is a lot to write out when you're writing it all the time. <laughs> but the NCW, it just features fabric so nicely. You can have the coolest turn locks, the most beautiful fabric on the flap, beautiful vinyl on the exterior. And the best part of it is it just doesn't require a lot of stuff. You don't have to go buy all the hardware. You don't have to go buy yards and yards of fabric. It really, like it's a scrappy kind of project, which is just like, what? What are you? How did this happen? So since this pattern is so ridiculously popular, there are so many videos already on YouTube walking you through how to make it. So I'm being a bit redundant here, but to be completely honest, I cannot make something unless I'm going to film a tutorial for it because I just don't have time. So you're gonna get another Necessary Clutch Wallet tutorial. We're gonna walk through a lot of the different tweaks that I found really useful. Now this pattern is written beautifully. It is a beautiful, beautiful pattern. It is written for beginners. And now let me show you. The first version I made is all quilt cotton. Quilt cotton on the flap, quilt cotton on the little decorative piece here, quilt cotton on the exterior, open it up, quilt cotton on the lining, quilt cotton everywhere. It's all quilt cotton. So this is a great, great beginner wallet pattern because if you do that, if you use all quilt cotton, you're going to end up with a beautiful wallet that you can actually make on your domestic sewing machine. However, however, as beautiful, seriously beautiful as this wallet is, it is a homemade look, which we love because we work really hard in our homes on what we make, but it is a homemade look. But what's so cool about this pattern is that you just tweak a couple things. You, you tweak an area where they're stitching, maybe add some rivets, change out the interfacing, change the material just a little bit, and then you have a professional level wallet. This would be seen in a store, I would buy it. It's amazing. Now, to have a pattern that speaks to the beginners who are just working with quilt cotton and they can adore what they make, but then also speaks to the more advanced bag makers who can work with leather and vinyl and make something that looks like it's in a really fancy store. I don't even know what to say about that. Everything's falling off my table. I don't even know what to say about that. It's too much. So in today's tutorial, I'm gonna be showing you some of the tricks and tips and things like that. There are two main other tutorials on YouTube that I found incredibly helpful when I was studying and researching for this pattern. First is one from Lauren Mormino. You guys know how much I adore Lauren. She has quite a few videos actually going through walking this through with all kinds of tweaks. So I will have those listed down below. Another YouTuber that I watched is CS Swag. I hope I'm saying that right, CS Swag. She has a wonderful tutorial going through this in depth on her machine. It's absolutely wonderful. I will have her tutorial linked down below as well. Make sure you are subscribed to both of those accounts if you love Megan Bags because they are the pros. So as you can see, I'm a big fan of the turn locks. Okay, so these wallets both have turn locks on them. I'm a big, big fan. I'm a big fan of like these decorative turn locks. These are fun. I personally think a turn lock is a great way to go with this wallet, especially if you're using any sort of vinyl because once you have the vinyl and the lining and then you put all your stuff in it, it's going to be a little thick 
and a turn lock just really helps hold it in place. However, I did make another version with a magnetic snap. Look how beautiful this is. Honestly, I had it squished under a dictionary all night to try to flatten it out so it's a little too flat now. But this also has the quilt cotton flap, the nice thinner vinyl. We'll talk about vinyl in the tutorial today, but the nice thinner vinyl for the exterior. And then we use the magnetic snap here. So this is also a great option, especially if you have a fabric that you really don't want to take anything away from. You don't want a big old lock like ruining the design. Magnetic snap is a great way to go. I would just make sure you keep the material as thin as possible. I want to talk to you guys for a moment about vinyl. Not all vinyl is created equal. There is vinyl that is thicker, almost leather-like thick, like marine vinyl, things like that. And then there's a vinyl that's very thin. You want to go with the thin vinyl for this wallet, in my personal opinion. I feel like with, these are both thinner vinyls. With that thinner vinyl, you don't have a big, bulky, bulky wallet. For example, this wallet's not finished yet, but this is an all leather wallet, and you can see the bulk difference. You see that? So while it's beautiful and it's nice and it's, you know, feels really nice and it's fancy, it is bulkier. And when you put all your stuff in it, I mean, this is going to be, you know, kind of a beast. So if you're just starting out, this is your first wallet, you're still kind of getting to know your machine, try Quilt Cotton. Just try Quilt Cotton. It doesn't use a lot of fabric. You're not wasting a lot. Try Quilt Cotton. See, get a feel for the pattern, get a feel for how it works. And then once you're ready to step it up a little bit, thinner vinyl. I will have a couple options down in the description of this video of where to find some thinner vinyl. My Punk Broidery has a lot of beautiful options, as does Zor L Fabrics, which is actually where both of these are from. Okay, so let's just like actually run through what I'm going to be showing you today. Today we're going to be using vinyl for this exterior bottom part. We're going to be using quilt cotton for the flap. We will be using a turn lock. When we open this up, we have two pockets that have six card slots in each. Each is also a billfold pocket on the back side, see, just like that. And then we have two zipper pockets in the center. Now the pattern is just for one zipper pocket and then this other one is just, you know, a divider here. A few of you said on Instagram that you wanted to see how to do two zipper pockets, so we will be going over that. Let me just like give you a warning. You wanna use number three zippers here. If you're, especially if you're gonna be using two zipper pockets, don't use the number five zippers. You know, the thicker ones, use the skinny ones, the number three zippers. I will have some links, again, down in the description of where you can find that. So we're gonna be using that. And then for the sides, the pattern actually has you stitching along these sides here. I'm just gonna be using some rivets because it works fine and it's easier and it's cleaner. I am also adjusting the way these zipper pockets are built. So we're gonna be adding some zipper tabs that don't extend all the way to the end because we are trying to reduce the bulk in these seams as much as possible. So those are my big tweaks for today. Okay, I know that was a long introduction, guys. If you're new to the Oak Lords YouTube channel, please consider clicking subscribe down below. If at any point you like this video, please give it a like. Make sure you check the comments down below. I will have timestamps. I'm also putting the timestamps as chapters on the video. So let me know if you see that. If you kind of scroll over the video and look right down here, there should be little blocks. And each one of those is a chapter. So that should help you with the timestamps more. You can just kind of scroll over it and it will show you like, oh, this is when we're doing the zippers. So you can just click there and go straight there in the video. Let me know if that's working for you guys. Thank you so much, Janelle from Emmeline Bags for allowing me to use your patterns in my tutorials. You guys know how much I love Emmeline Bags patterns, even though I don't always pronounce the name right. I do apologize for that, but I love them. Go check out their website. The pattern is down in the description. All right. Let's get started. So one of the coolest things about this project is that it's actually pretty scrappy. You don't really need a lot of anything, but you need a few different things. So for the main part of my body today, the outer portion, I'm gonna use this beautiful vinyl. Like I said, you really wanna use a thinner vinyl. Now, to be honest, this vinyl is thicker than the one I made on the wallet I showed you in the beginning. So we'll see how that works, but the thinner the better. But I do suggest vinyl for the exterior. I think it really gives it a nice feel. You're gonna need a fat quarter of that. Next, you're gonna want a piece of fabric for the flap. About a fat quarter is gonna be fine. This is quill cotton, but I will interface it to give it a more vinyl feel so that it, it kind of matches up thickness-wise with the vinyl I'm using today. For your lining, you're gonna want about a half a yard. Now you can really get this scrappy. This is a fun project. I mean, the inside of a wallet can be nuts. I think that's so fun. So I have 
a couple different pieces of fabric here. One I'll be using for the pockets and the lining, and then another one I'll be using for the zipper pocket. So here are all the hardware pieces I'll be using in the wallet today. First, my bag tag. I will have a link down in the description going over the entire process of getting these bag tags made. Next, a turn lock. So just like in this first version, I will be using rivets for the sides right here. The pattern does have you sew this. You can definitely do that. However, if you're struggling to get this under your machine, rivets are really the way to go. It's going to secure it. It's going to be great. It doesn't add a lot of bulk to the sides here. I'm a big fan of rivets for this pattern. So I have these medium size rivets from Emmeline Bags. Okay, this next one is zipper tape. You guys see me use zipper tape all the time. I love zipper tape, but this is actually number three zipper tape. I normally use number five zipper tape. Number three zipper tape, these little coils right here, it's a lot skinnier. That's what we want here. Since we're gonna be doing two zippers in this wallet right up here, again, remember the name of the game here is to keep everything as skinny as possible. We want skinny zippers, we want skinny zipper pulls. We don't wanna add a lot of extra bulk here. If you're doing just one zipper, a number five zipper is going to be fine. However, if you're gonna do the double zippers, I do encourage you to try to use number three zippers. Now, number three zippers are really popular on Etsy from Zip It. You could use those ones or you can use zipper tape. This was the first time I've ever used number three zipper tape and I love it. The zipper tape I bought also came with these little zipper pulls. There's not a whole lot of like fun zipper pull options for number three zipper tape, but again, you're gonna be using this on the interior bags. I think you'll be okay. Okay, we have lots of other stuff today. I like to have a lot of things on hand. First, clips, always clips guys, lots and lots of clips. Next, a handheld hole punch. Now, I do love to use the hole punch on my rivet press. However, we're gonna be getting into some pretty tight corners. I just found this a lot easier to use and keep the holes really consistent. We'll go over that when we get to that step. Beacon 3-in-1 glue, you should always have this on hand. It is the best. Lots of marking tools, so let's just go through them. An air erasing fabric marker. This is perfect for marking on the card slots areas that you need a darker mark, but you need it to go away. So this, this works really well. This will not stay on your fabric, it'll disappear. This is a chalk pencil. It has a white lead in it, so it's just a chalk pencil. Highly suggest this also for things like card slots, areas where you wanna mark it, but you want it to go away. This is a friction erasable marker. Don't use this on your fabric where you're gonna see it later, okay? Because yes, heat will erase it, but it will come back or its ghost will come back. So this is great for marking on the back of fabric, on the back of interfacing, or you know, in seam allowances. And then if you're using any sort of leather or vinyl, one of these marking pens is great. It's a silver ink and it wipes off of leather and vinyl really easily. The scissors I always have on hand are my little snips and my Kai fabric scissors. A seam ripper and stiletto combo is always very helpful. My favorite ruler, one inch by six inches, just great for marking little spots. This turning tool is amazing. This is the best turning tool. This is so much better than those really skinny, you know, plastic ones that will break or pierce your fabric. This is great. It has a smaller end, a bigger end, whatever you're turning, you're probably not gonna rip your fabric with this one. Since I have hardware I'm installing today, I have my small screwdriver set here. I love this one. The uh, tips of the screwdrivers are magnetic, so it makes those little tiny screws really easy to install. And then some heavy duty quarter inch double-sided tape. And then you can see I have a couple scraps here. I have a scrap of Decovo Light, some fusible fleece. You just want some scraps if you're installing hardware just to protect your fabric, and we'll go over that. I'll be sewing on my Bernina 770QE domestic sewing machine. The needles I'm using today are Microtex 8012. For the top thread, so the thread that goes through the needle, I'm using Mara 70 weight, which is a little bit of a heavier thread. It looks really good on top stitching. But then for the bobbin, because the bobbin really does prefer a thinner thread and I just live to make my machine happy, I'm using the Mara 100. So let's talk about the pattern pieces first. Pattern piece A, this is the flap. This is like, this is like the star of the show, right? That flap. This is where you get real fun, real wild. Um, this flap, you're going to want two exterior cuts. So you can see today I have these two cuts here. These are both quilt cotton. And when you're cutting this out, if you have a directional print, remember on the front of the wallet, the little bump on in here, that's the bottom. So make sure the direction for the exterior piece that you're gonna see when the wallet's closed, 
the top is the straight edge. However, for the piece that's going to be on the interior of the wallet, so when it's open, it's gonna look like this. The rounded edge will be the top for the underside of the flap. You know what I mean? You should, you should put these together because this is how they'll be and then just make sure it's exactly the way you want it. Both of these have a layer of woven interfacing attached to them and then a layer of Decoville light. That's the, that's the magic combo here. It feels soft like quilt cotton, but firm like vinyl or like a really thin leather. It's really, really nice and easy to work with. Okay, pieces B and C we are not gonna be using today. However, I will show you, they give a really fun accent. They're very easy to work with. So if you wanted to add this, it's no problem at all. You're gonna use an exterior piece of fabric here using just the fabric. So no interfacing, just the fabric using piece B. And then from piece C, use Decoville Heavy. Again, we're not using it today because I'm not making it, but Decoville Heavy is what you would wanna use for your piece C. And that just provides this really beautiful border on the edge of your wallet. Next from piece D, you're gonna have your exterior fabric. Since we're using vinyl, we don't have this interfaced with anything. It's a little bit thicker than the vinyl I used before, so we'll see. But this is great vinyl, a thinner vinyl. I have a couple other recommendations down in the description of good vinyl and where to find it for this wallet. And then we have our lining fabric and our lining fabric is just quilt cotton and then craft fuse. There's no woven interfacing here. It's just the quilt cotton fuse to the craft fuse. So this gives it almost like a paper texture and it's gonna be perfect for the lining. So here are the lining cuts for our zipper pockets. Now we're doing two zipper pockets today, so there's just one small change. For the pocket lining, the pattern has you cut two rectangles. I'm gonna have you cut four. If you're doing double pockets, we just need two more of these. So the measurements for this are in the pattern. These are quill cotton and they have no interfacing at all. Then we have the outer pocket. We're gonna follow the pattern here. We have two cuts and both of these are interfaced with craft fuse. And then we have the zipper tab. Now they're gonna have you cut this. I'm, I'm cutting mine at two inches by eight inches long. And then I'm just gonna make one long zipper tab and attach it all at the same time. So I'll show you how I do that. But this is just a piece of quill cotton, no interfacing whatsoever. And it's two inches by eight inches. All right, next up we have our lining cuts for our card slot pockets. You're going to need two cuts of your card slot pockets and both of these are quilt cotton and interfaced with craft fuse. You're gonna see a lot of other YouTubers that use this as one big cut and then fold it and then cut it in half. Definitely, that's a great way to go. I'm just gonna follow the pattern. I'm gonna show you how to do that. Two cuts of your card slot pockets. And then for the back of the card slots, you have your card slot back. This is also just a piece of quilt cotton interfaced with craft fuse. So since we're not adding that decorative side, we're gonna skip that step and we're gonna go straight into making the front flap. Now. I am using a turn lock, which means I can mess with this later because the turn lock hole has to go through both pieces. If you're using a magnetic snap, you're gonna wanna think about that before we finish this up. But I'll guide you along the way and give some suggestions of how to do that. So first, let's just take both of our flat pieces. Remember, they're already interfaced and we're gonna lay them right sides together, lining up all the edges really well. Grab some clips and just clip along the edge. Okay, so now we're gonna take this to the sewing machine and sew along the curved edges and the sides at a quarter inch seam allowance. We're not gonna sew along the straight edge here. Backstitch at the beginning and the end. If you're worried about these curves, go slow. It's just, just go slow. You don't win anything if you go fast. You just, you just make yourself more frustrated. Go nice and slow around all these curves, doing your best to really stay consistent at a quarter inch around the whole curvy edge. Okay, once you have this all sewn together, now what we wanna do is just create some little notches around our curves. So I like to just snip into the seam allowance about halfway all the way around the curvy edges. And just doing these little slits seems to be enough. If you wanted, you could definitely take some pinking shears here and use that to create those nice little triangles or use your scissors to create little triangles around here. But for the most part, cutting these slits seems to be fine. Okay, so now we're gonna turn this right side out. So just be gentle and push the whole thing 
through that opening on the top. And if your material is a little stiff, this is where that turning tool will come. Honestly, I use this a lot because I, I wear these like press on nails a lot. And if I'm not wearing the press on nails, my nails are naturally very weak. So I don't like to put my hand into these things and bend my nails. It just doesn't feel good. So this is like the hand I wish I had. So if you're using a thicker material here, like maybe some vinyl and you're kind of worried about maybe these stitches showing right along the edge, you can run this under the machine one more time and just double up your stitching, maybe at a smaller stitch length, like a two millimeter stitch length, just to make sure you don't see any of those stitches. But I tell you, if you're using quilt cotton in the Decoville light, you should be in good shape. Okay, since I'm using all quilt cotton here, I can iron this. <laughs> I use vinyl so much, I don't get to iron things flat so much, but, so I pushed out all of the edges really, really well. I mean, I took the time to really push out these edges. You want this as crisp and clean as possible, because this is, you know, this is the star of the show here. This is your flap. So now I'm just gonna press it with steam, and that heat is just gonna soften up our Decoville light to make it really malleable. And then if you want to make this super flat, grab something like a ruler or a book, something kind of heavy that you can put down on top of your flat while it's hot, and that is just going to make it perfect. All right, here we go. This is my flap. Isn't that so fun? Oh, this wallet is gonna look so cool. So when it's down on the top, it'll look like this. Raise it up, peekaboo, hello. <laughs> Honestly, uh, his face is probably gonna get cut out <laughs> from the hardware, but that's okay. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to top stitch along the sides and the bottom all the way around and also along the top. I'm gonna top stitch along the top because my hardware doesn't require me to get my hand in here at any point. If you're going to be adding a magnetic snap, I suggest just top stitching around the sides. Now I suggest top stitching first because I feel like it's easier to top stitch this without the hardware in it. So top stitch around an eighth of an inch or a quarter of an inch, whichever is easier for you. If you've got a lot of bulk in your seam and you feel like it's kind of wobbling a lot under the needle or like right here, it's just too thick for you to top stitch comfortably, don't do an eighth of an inch, do a quarter of an inch because if you do a quarter of an inch, you're gonna get right past all that bulk in the seam. So you're still gonna hold everything in place really neatly but you're not sewing through, you know, four layers of Decoville light on your machine. So I suggest top stitching first and then we'll add our hardware. Well, that is some nice top stitching if I do say so myself. You can't really see the top stitching because I try to keep my thread a coordinating color so that if it's not good, you don't notice. <laughs> but it actually looks really good. So I did close up this top here. If you're doing a magnetic snap, don't do that. But I, I did do it because I'm okay with it. So now let's install our hardware on the flap. So the goal here, whether you're using a magnetic snap or a turn lock, is to get it centered on your flap and you know right around here you, you don't I, I mean you do you but i don't want it up here i want it like right here i want it to look like it kind of nests in that little bump right so if you're using a magnetic snap i suggest you find the center along this bottom here and then go up about an inch maybe an inch and a quarter and center your magnetic snap right there and when you do that, you're gonna do it on the underside. So not the side you see on the exterior, right? We only wanna install the magnetic snap on one side. So you wanna do it on the underside, the lining side. You're gonna do that centered on the bottom here, between an inch and an inch and a quarter from the middle. And then all you have to do is mark the spots with your washer, insert the, I would insert the male end here because the male end is usually skinnier and this is nice and flat. We wanna keep this really flat. We don't want a lot of bulk here. So I would insert the male end of your magnetic snap right here in the middle and just make sure you use the hole in the top to cut your slits. You don't want your slits to go through both layers of your flap, but I am going to cut a hole through everything. So here is my turn lock female end. Now, a lot of you guys have reached out to me before about installing these turn locks. And the goal is when it's closed, you want it to look like this. So 
when it's closed, I want my little moon shape to be upright. Now, it, for this one, it really doesn't matter that much. I mean, if it's closed and it looks like that, I'm okay with it. So this design has an orientation to it, right? We have a top and a bottom. So when I installed the female portion, I installed it upside down, see? So the opening end is installed upside down so that way when I close it and I lock it, my little ears are right side up, right? So think about that. Okay, so first things first, I wanna find the midpoint along this right here. So I'm just gonna fold this in half. I know it's like, but it's so flat and pretty and crisp. Don't fold it. I can iron it, it'll be fine. I'm gonna use an air erasing marker here because I have no more raw edges. If whatever I mark is gonna be seen in the end, so I need it to go away. So I'm just gonna pinch it a little bit, make a tiny mark with my marker. So that way I know where the midpoint is exactly. Okay, and then you can see I separated this. So this part right here is what you see on the front. This is gonna be on the back. This is like the washer. Let's use the washer for this. It's easier to use since it's flatter. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna center this however you want. I mean, you can center it like that. Let's center it like this actually, because the washer has like a triangle made with the three dots. So I think if we center it like this, and then when we close the lock, it'll be, it doesn't matter. But I'm going to center it, and I have the bottom of my washer about half of an inch from the bottom edge of my flap. I'm not that worried about where everything is placed because when it comes to installing this, I'm actually going to determine where this goes based on this. So I'm not gonna measure this out and then hope it all fits together. I'm gonna use this part right here later to determine where this goes. So this is centered in about a half of an inch from the bottom. Now I'm gonna grab my marking tool and I'm going to trace inside my design for the hole. And then I'm gonna trace inside of the holes for the screws, just like that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to cut around the holes and around the center design as one big hole. It needs to be smaller than the washer in the end, but it can just be one big kind of wonky design all the way around. So to get it started, I'm gonna grab a seam ripper and I'm ripping through both layers of my flap. And then I'm actually gonna grab some smaller chi scissors because they are very sharp. And I'm just gonna cut in here and I'm just gonna start going around all of my markings, cutting through both layers. Okay, so I cut a small hole to get started and then we'll just adjust it as we need to. So it goes in like this. So I still have quite a bit more to cut. I need to cut up towards top of the corners of the crescent. Okay, so now when I insert my turn lock, just like that, I always feel like it's not centered. <laughs> Wait, no, we need to go on the front. Which way is the front? This is the front, okay. So we insert the turn lock on the front. So I put it in like that, I flip it over, and my crescent pokes through, and the holes for the screws poke through. So now we're good. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my washer, so because of the shape of this, I find that when I screw it all in, it can still kind of rotate a little bit. So I'm actually gonna add some glue to the fabric right next to the hole. So between the screws, and this will be where the washer will be just to kind of hold it all together better. There we go. And you could also add some glue on the other side as well. So for example, we can pop this out, add some glue in here, Glue's great, guys. Glue's your friend. So I'm just gonna add some more glue inside of here. You just don't wanna you know, do all this work and then this thing pops out later. And then you can grab your screwdriver and your screws and insert your screws into the back of your washer. Just gently, I'm not screwing them all the way down, I'm just screwing them enough to catch, but not you know, screwing it in completely. And then once it's all the way we like it, now we can remove one screw at a time, add a drop, just a tiny drop of glue into the hole, and then reinsert the screw and screw it in all the way. So just repeat this for the other two screws as well. Okay, so when we flip this right side out, this is what it's gonna look like. So when this gets installed, we'll have to install it like this. And when it's closed, 
How cool is that? That's a fun one. I like this one. Okay, so now we're gonna put this to the side. I'm going to wait until later to install the male portion of this. So now grab your exterior body. And if you have a direction here, go ahead and think about that. So flip it wrong side up. And when you fold it up, this right here is going to go right underneath your flap like that. So think about that now. If you want this to open and this to be a certain direction, then it needs to you know, lay it out like you want it and then open it up. So we're gonna find the midpoints along the top and bottom edges of this. So I just fold it in half so that the shorter edges come together, wrong sides together. And then I will grab my scissors and just cut a tiny, tiny, little, tiny triangle there. It just makes it easier to see the midpoints rather than using a marker or a pen. Okay, so now we have the midpoints marked on the top and bottom edges of our exterior panel. Our exterior panel is right side up. Now let's do the same thing and find the midpoint along the top edge of our flap. So I'm just gonna fold it in half. You don't have to fold the entire thing in half because if you have hardware here, that's gonna be hard to do. We just wanna fold the long straight edge on the top in half. And for this, I think I will use my fabric marker. Since it's white fabric, it'll be easy to see and I don't need it there forever. Okay, so you want the underside of your flap up. So the back of your flap, that should be facing up. And let's just line up the midpoint mark on your flap with the midpoint mark on your exterior panel. Grab your clips, clip them together at the midpoint first, and then clip out along the edges. Okay, so now let's just go baste this down at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. So if you take your unit and lay it so that the wrong side of this is up, and you pull the flap down, you can see once it's all together, this flap is going to bend like this. So it's not gonna be flat, you know, it's a wallet. It's gonna bend like this, come up like this. It's gonna look cute. So take this unit and move it to the side. Now this is the trick I see everybody, everybody on YouTube doing. And I didn't wanna do it because everybody else is doing it, but dang it, it's such a good idea, we gotta do it. So to turn this right side out, the pattern has you leave an opening on the edge here. No, we're not gonna do that. So take your lining piece and we're gonna fold it in half, long sides together, just like this. And then just press along that line right there. There you go. You can fold it in half again, short ways, like that. And press along the center. So we're just finding the midpoint, right? Okay, so now you should have like a nice intersection right here. Using that intersection, let's mark a six inch line going right along the long ways of your panel. So just like this, six inches. Centered as best as you can get it. Grab your seam ripper and seam rip along that marked line. If it helps, use your scissors instead or a rotary cutter. A rotary cutter is a good option too here. That seam ripper is going all over the place, isn't it? Yikes. Okay, if this raw edge here, cause we're never gonna close this. We're never gonna sew this close. I know it's nuts, isn't it? If this drives you crazy cause you're worried about fraying, just add some fray check to the edges here, but we wanna leave this opening just as is. Okay, so now grab your exterior unit with the flap, lay it right side up, back of the flap, right side up. Take your lining, lay it right side down and line up all of the edges and then just clip together so that both of the panels are right sides together. All right, now let's sew along this entire clipped edge at a quarter inch seam allowance. Once you have these sewn together, you can cut slits around all the curves or you can just trim the seam allowance down a little bit you can trim it in half or just as much as you're comfortable. Either way, that's gonna help you get those nice smooth edges around these curves. I know some of us have a really hard time with this. I'm actually going to not trim down the seam by the flap. I'm gonna leave that because there's a lot of layers there. I really don't wanna mess with that. So I'm just gonna trim down the seam allowance around the edges of the sides and the bottom. Okay, now we're gonna turn out the wallet through this hole. Now remember, we don't have any stitching over here, so it can rip. So just be gentle. I work on getting the flap out first, but you know, depending on what kind of interfacing you're using, 
will still be a little tricky. And if it rips a little bit, that's fine. Just don't, don't let it rip all the way to the sides. All right, once you get most of it pulled out, you should be in good shape. Now you can just put your hand in there and push out the edges. You shouldn't really have to worry about that ripping anymore. Okay, once you get it all pushed through, I know some of you guys are gonna be like, what the heck? You have a giant hole in your wallet. <laughs> I know, <laughs> it's crazy, <laughs> but it's gonna be fine. So we're just gonna push along these edges to get them as flat as possible. And then I'm going to iron this. And there we go, just push along all the edges. We're just trying to roll out that seam. You don't, you know, when you turn this out, part of the seam might be kind of wonky and wavy. And you wanna take the time to get this all nice and straight. Okay, so I have this lining side up. I'm not ironing on the vinyl. I'm just ironing on the lining. If you use that craft fuse, yeah, craft fuse is like paper. It's gonna wrinkle up, but that's okay because once it gets hot, it's like goo. Okay, so if you want like a little sneak peek of what your wallet's gonna look like, you can kind of fold these in just like that. Fold it up in half, pull this down. <gasps> look at that, oh my gosh. I tell you what, I pick out the fabric and the vinyl, but I don't actually, I can't even imagine, look at that. That looks so good. Okie dokie. So we're going to now top stitch along the exterior at an eighth of an inch around the entire edge or do it at a quarter of an inch, an eighth of an inch or a quarter of an inch, whichever is easier for you. What did I do over here? I did something, we'll be fine. Whichever is easier for you, just do an eighth of an inch or quarter inch top stitch with the vinyl or the exterior side right side up because that's what you're gonna be seeing the most of. Also, when top stitching, we do have to back stitch at the beginning and the end and I know a lot of us don't like that look of the top stitching. So if you want to start over here on the side, these are going to be folded in and it's less likely you'll see much of this. So I would start your stitching over here on the side and that way you have a nice clean top stitching in all the areas you're really going to see it. But you know, the kind of messier part you won't really see. Okay, so here it is all top stitched. I probably should have put a piece of tape or something underneath my presser foot because I did not realize that this vinyl is a little bit stickier. So my stitch length is all over the place, but that's okay. The places you're gonna see it the most are the top and the bottom, and for the most part, that's fine. <laughs> Over here on the side is like, what is that? That's so small. Anyways, it's fine. Look how cute this is. Oh, that's so pretty. Okay, so now I'm gonna add my bag tag centered on the back of my wallet. So it's gonna be underneath my flap over here. You can use a vinyl or leather marking pen. This just has a nice silver ink and it will wipe off of the vinyl. Or you could use like a chalk pencil if you wanna do it on your fabric. So I'm just gonna fold my flap in half and I want to find the midpoint along the top edge right here. So I'm just gonna pinch it and then I will use my chalk pencil to mark right in there. So here is my tag. I'm not that picky on exactly where it goes. I just don't want it down here, you know? But you know, kind of towards the top and centered is the goal. So about there. Let me get you guys a measurement. So we're midpoint from the top of my bag tag to the top of the, the edge of the outer panel is about half of an inch. So going down to the prongs, I'd say about an inch down. So I'm gonna go one inch down from the midpoint on the top edge of my outer panel, face like this. So that way when the wallet's closed, this is how it will look on the end. I'll show you on this one. So here's the other wallet I made. And when you flip it over, there's my bag tag right there. So I'm gonna grab my ruler and I'm gonna measure down one inch and centered from that top edge. Try your best to keep your ruler nice and straight. You know, don't measure it like that. Measure it like this. And then I'm gonna go down one inch and just make a mark with my silver ink pen. And then I'm gonna grab my washer and I'm gonna center it on here. I know my washer, my prongs are a little off centered. So on the first slit and then on the fifth slit is where my prongs are gonna go. So the middle slit would be the third slit. So that's where I center it. I center it on that dot with that third slit, trying to keep it as straight as possible. 
And then I'll mark in the first slit and the fifth slit. Okay, so now I'm gonna grab my seam ripper and you're only seam ripping through the exterior. Put your hand inside the panel here. You don't wanna go through the lining. We only wanna go through the exterior. Make sure your fingers are out of the way. So I make sure my fingers are separated around the slits and very gently, I'm gonna insert my seam ripper and move along that slit. Don't go farther than what you marked. You, want, you don't want this to be big holes and then your bag tag is flopping around. There we go. So let me just put this in. So there we go. That looks perfect. Now I'm gonna grab a scrap of Decoville Light just to beef this up a little bit. I always like to add a little bit of interfacing between the washer and the fabric just to make sure that it's nice and sturdy. You know, you don't, this is, this will make it less likely the vinyl ends up ripping. So I'm gonna use my washer to mark the same slits that I marked on my vinyl. And then I will carefully seam rip those slits as well. So now I'm gonna insert this with the glue side against the back of the vinyl. And honestly, I'm just kind of feeling around here. <laughs> there we go. So now I have the, let's so I can show you. I have the interfacing attached over the slits. Now I'm gonna grab my washer, put my washer over that, and then I'm going to push down my prongs. And now just to protect the lining right here, I'm gonna cover those prongs with a layer of fusible fleece. So for this, you just wanna make sure it's big enough to cover all of the prongs. You see it in there? And I'm not gonna fuse this. I'm just gonna glue it on using my Beacon 3-in-1 glue. So on the glue side though of the fusible fleece, I'm going to just add a bunch of glue here. Excuse you. And then I'm going to open this up so that I can see what I'm doing. And I'm gonna carefully insert this glue side down over the prongs. There we go. Get it nice and flat. And that's just gonna protect everything, but still give us that beautiful tag on the back. Isn't that cute? Okay, let's see it again. Let's put it together again. I love doing this. I'll do this over and over and over. So fold it up, fold it down. Hello. Well, hello there. Who made you? That's who. Okay, so I know you're thinking, all right, well now let's add the other part of our turn lock. No, we're gonna wait. We wanna see how bulky our card slots and all of that's gonna be. We wanna wait and see how much stuff we're gonna have in here so we know exactly where we wanna put that turn lock. Cause you can see, we can put that turn lock all the way down here. We can put it all the way up here. We have a lot of space to work with here. So you don't have to do that yet. So let's put this to the side and work on the lining. So first we're gonna work on the card slot pocket. So lay these wrong side up. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna mark a series of lines on here. The measurements for all of these are on the pattern. I already have it all marked. I do suggest you mark what the, where the top of your card slot pocket is going to be so you don't get confused later. So I just put a little T up there. On the first line from the top, you're gonna fold the fabric right sides together and just pinch right along that line. Now what's nice here is if you're using craft fuse, it's like folding paper. You fold it like that and it just stays. You don't have to press it yet. We will press it with an iron, but we don't have to do it yet. So then we're gonna do the same thing, except now we're gonna fold it on the next line, wrong sides together. So I just pinch right at the edges, just like that. And then line up the sides to make it straight and push down. There you go. So then on the third line, we're gonna go right sides together. These ones are always easier to fold because you can just see the whole line on the back here. You can see, there we go. The fourth line, wrong sides together. Again, just worry about pinching the sides and making sure they're pinched on the line and then push it all down. So you can see we have a card slot situation going on here. Isn't that cute? Look at my little dragons. All right, next one, right sides together. And always keep checking to make sure your sides are lined up. If your card slot pocket's starting to veer off, reevaluate, get it all nice and straight. And then on the last one, wrong sides together. So go ahead and repeat that with your other card slot pocket as well. Okay, once you have it all folded, like I said, if you use craft fuse, this should be nice and easy, but let's give it a press with our iron. And then what I do is right after I'm done pressing it, I grab a ruler and just place it over it real fast. It cools really quickly, but as it cools, it's gonna stay super flat. So let's just do the same thing with our other card slot pocket. 
Now let's take this to the sewing machine and we have three folded top edges on each card slot. We're going to top stitch at an eighth of an inch along each of the three edges. So we're just pretty much holding those edges in place. Once you have them top stitch, just refold them so that they're the way you want them. And now let's baste along the sides at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. I like to always go from the bottom to the top on each side. That way you don't end up having the card slot shifting in opposite directions. Okay, now you're gonna to wanna to trim these down to the size it says in the pattern. When you're trimming this down, you're gonna trim the bottom edge. So don't trim the top, just trim the bottom edge. My suggestion is to lay this on your cutting mat, line up the top edge with one of the grid marks, and then use your cutting mat to help you figure out exactly how big this needs to be. Cause you'll see when you put your ruler on top of this, it can kind of wobble back and forth. And so it's just easiest to get the most accurate size if you lay it on your cutting mat and then use the grid marks on the cutting mat and then use your ruler to help line it all up. You see what I'm saying? Okay, once you have them trimmed down, we're going to connect them and we're gonna connect them along both of their bottom edges. So card slots pointed away from each other. Let's lay them right sides together, lining up those two bottom edges. Here we go, and they should be the same size. Now let's sew along this clipped edge at a quarter inch seam allowance. Now take your unit and lay it wrong side up and we wanna press this seam open. This is pretty important. So you might find this easiest if you press it with an iron. I don't really like ironing on the back of the craft fuse so I'm just gonna lay this right side up making sure that seam is pressed open. And then I'll grab my iron and just press along it from the front. Okay, once you have that seam in the center pressed down really well, now we wanna draw a midpoint line going straight down our card slots because we're gonna separate these so we can have you know a lot of places for our credit cards. So you can either mark the midpoint on the top and the bottom and then use your ruler to just measure down or you can just take half of the measurement. So you can measure how wide the card slot pockets are and then just measure half in from the side. So I used my chalk pencil to mark that line. And now we're gonna take this to the sewing machine and we're going to stitch along this marked line. I'm gonna use a top stitch, so about like a three millimeter stitch length. And then I like to back stitch on the top of each pocket. This is something we do all the time in wallets just because this gets pulled on a lot. You don't want that stitch ripping because then honestly it's all gonna come undone. So just go slow and as you get to the top of each one, just back stitch over it. So your card slots are all good. Now let's attach the card slot back pocket. So grab that piece of fabric and lay it right side down along your card slot pocket. It should match up perfectly. If you lay it like this, it will not match up perfectly because that is the wrong direction. So the shorter edges should go with the shorter edges. Remember these are rectangles, not squares. So match up the top and bottom edges and use some clips to clip them together. Okay, now let's go sew along the top and bottom edges at a quarter inch seam allowance. Don't worry about the sides, but do make sure you backstitch at the beginning and the end each time. Okay, once you have that stitched, let's just flip this right side out. You have a nice big hole here, but <laughs> still a little tricky because those card slot pockets get bulky, but they should still be, I mean, as thin as you can get them. All right, so let's flip it all out. And now grab those seams on the top and bottom and use your finger to get it nice and straight and flat. Don't let it fold in on itself anywhere. So I just work on one at a time. So this one is nice and flat. I'm going to press that with my iron. And then I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. Get that nice and flat, there we go. And it should all line up really nicely. Okay, so now we're gonna take this to the sewing machine. We're gonna top stitch along the folded edges on the top and the bottom, and then also along the sides. We, we already have this top stitching here, but we're just gonna go right over it. Everything at an eighth of an inch seam allowance just to hold everything together. There we go, there's our card slot pocket. Isn't that cool? Okay, so once you're done, you can set this to the side. 
Now we're gonna do the zippers. Like I said, I'm doing two zippers. You don't have to, you can just do one, but I'm going to do two. I like to measure my zipper tape six inches long. I make my zippers pretty short because I do not like any bulk on the sides of these pockets. So each of my zippers I am cutting at six inches long. And then I have my adorable little zipper pulls for my little zipper tape. It's like, it's like regular zipper tape and pulls, but miniature. It's so cute. So I'm just gonna add my pulls onto my tape real quickly. There we go. Now we have our zippers prepped. Now let's prep our zipper tabs. So I'm doing mine different than the pattern. It's just what works best for me. Remember for my zipper tabs, I have one piece of fabric, no interfacing, cut at two inches by eight inches. I'm gonna take it wrong side up and fold it hot dog style. So long edges together, just like that. And then press along this edge. And then I'm just gonna open it up and then take the parallel long edges, fold them right sides together up to meet that pressed midpoint mark and then just press with my iron. Do this for both of the long edges. Okay, so this is what she should have and then you can fold the whole thing in half just like that. You can add a couple clips here. I know it looks like we're making a wristlet strap, we're not. This is just an easy way to do zipper tabs, in my opinion. Okay, so now grab one of your little zippers and just insert it into that little fabric hot dog bun, just like that. So the raw edge of your zipper is in there. And then since these are short, it's easiest if I do it this way, watch. I'm gonna take my zipper tape and I'm just gonna flip it like that. See, like a little curly cue. And then insert the other side into my fabric. See, Izzy pizzy. There we go, now I have both ends of my zipper tape inserted into the zipper tab. This is way longer than it needs to be. So you could probably make this short, but just, just to be, you know, make it easy. Do the same thing with the other one, just insert one edge in there, and then just flip it, and then insert the other edge in there. Okay, so now we're gonna go to the sewing machine and we're gonna top stitch along the double folded edge right here at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. You can also top stitch along the single fold edge if you'd like, but really you just wanna make sure you top stitch right here closest to the zipper. Okay, so this is kind of what we have now, see? And now all you have to do is grab your scissors and just trim down the zipper tabs right along the edge of your zipper tape, see? So my zipper tab is now the same length as my zipper tape. And now I have these perfect little zipper tabs. And again, I know that the pattern does the zipper tabs differently. I do not want my zipper tabs in the side seams of my pocket. That adds too much bulk for me. So I am, my goal is to get everything as thin as possible because it makes it easier to make this wallet. Okay, so now both of our zippers are good to go. Next, I'm going to move the zipper pull and I'm gonna find the midpoint along each of my zippers. So I'm just gonna pinch it so you can use scissors to cut a teeny tiny triangle right here on the edge to find the midpoint or you can use any sort of marking tool. Just as long as you keep it in the seam, you should be fine. Find the midpoint for both of your zippers. So now I'm gonna first attach the zipper to the outer pocket and then we'll attach the lining. So take your outer pockets and we wanna focus on the longer edges of our outer pockets. These are not squares, these are rectangles. So longer edges, let's find the midpoint along the top long edge of your outer pocket. So you can just fold this, mark it with a pen. Do this on the top and bottom of both of your outer zipper pocket panels, especially if you're doing the double zippers like I am. So now grab one of your outer zipper panels and lay it right side up. Take one of your zippers and when the zipper pull is closed, it should be on the left and lay it right side down. Match up the midpoints of your zipper and your zipper panel. Clip along the middle first and then clip out towards the sides. And I'm going to attach one zipper at a time. Once you get the hang of this, you can just kind of do it all in the same step. But to make it easier, we'll do it one at a time. Now we're gonna base stitch along this clipped edge at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Sorry about that, I didn't record that, but I'll show you on the next one exactly what that base stitch looks like. So we have the zipper basted on. Now grab one of your zipper lining panels, so the shorter cuts, and lay that right side down along the back of your zipper. And this should just line up perfectly with the outer zipper 
pocket panel. I like to clip the top corners first, making sure the edges are all lined up. And then I will just clip along this top edge here. Since the lining panel for our zipper doesn't have any interfacing, it can stretch, which can make it a bit of a pain to work with. So just do your best. I'm going to move my zipper pull out of the way so that I can move it past the needle in a little bit. Okay, so now let's sew along this top clipped edge at a quarter inch seam allowance. Make sure you're using a zipper foot here. Okay, once you have these sewn together, let's flip them so that they're wrong sides together. And you can definitely use an iron here if you'd like, but honestly, if you're using craft fuse, you probably don't need to. So I like to flip them just like this. And then I will use clips to clip down the bottom edge of those pocket panels. All right, and then I'm just gonna press up here with my fingers and that gives me a nice straight line. I don't really need an iron. So now I'm gonna top stitch along this edge by the zipper. All right, there we go. We have one part of the zipper attached. Now let's attach the other pocket panel to this. You should have your midpoints marked. With your zipper that's attached to your panel right side up, take your other panel and lay it right side down and match up those midpoint marks. Clip in the middle first and then clip out to the side. And your panel should also match up with the sides of the previously attached outer panel. So this shouldn't be off by like an inch or anything, right? It should all line up really nicely. Okay, so now we're gonna go to the sewing machine and just baste the zipper in place at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. There we go. Now take another one of your zipper lining pockets and lay that right side down along the back of your zipper. And this should just line up nice and perfectly along that top edge. So once again, I'm gonna do corners first and then clip along the top edge by the zipper. Okay, so now we're gonna sew along this clipped edge at a quarter inch seam allowance. Okay, now let's flip the zipper lining and the zipper outer panels wrong sides together. This is always easiest if you close your zipper and then just press along that seam right next to the zipper tape. That craft fuse should, again, it's just paper, just paper. So I'm gonna flip it over and I'm gonna pull along my zipper lining panel and clip down the bottom edges to keep everything nice and straight. And now let's take this to the sewing machine and just top stitch along this top edge right here by the zipper. Okay, and that is how you attach one zipper. If you were only attaching one zipper, what you could then do is fold this entire unit so that the outer panels are right sides together. Also keep these zipper panels down. This was a really cool trick that I saw, I think uh, Sia, Sia do in a video and it is, it is awesome. So you just keep those zipper panels down because we don't close this edge anyways. Make sure your zipper is completely open. Sew along the sides and the bottom, flip it all out through the zipper and there you go. It's a lot easier than, you know, separating them, sewing along this. You don't have to do that. But if you're continuing on with me for the second zipper, let's do it. So I know I want my zipper pulls to be on the same sides. Maybe you don't, maybe you want them to be on opposite sides, but go ahead and think about that. So I'm going to lay my zipper panel just like this. And so I have my outer zipper panel right side up. I'm gonna take my remaining zipper and when the zipper is closed, it'll be on the left, just like this one down here. I'm gonna lay it right side down, match up the midpoints and then clip along the entire top edge. And now let's baste along that top edge at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Once you have that basted on, grab another one of your zipper lining panels and lay it right side down along the back of your zipper. Just like before, I'm going to match up the top corners. And if it's helpful, you can also add some clips along the sides over here just to get everything as straight as possible. And then we'll add some clips along this top edge by the zipper. Now let's sew along this top edge at a quarter inch seam allowance. As you've been seeing, I move my zipper pull out of the way as I'm sewing. You don't wanna try to go around it cause it's gonna be a crazy bump. So I get up to it and then I lift up my presser foot but I keep my needle down so nothing moves. Presser foot up, needle down, take my zipper pull, move it out of the way and then continue stitching. Once you have that panel stitched on, let's just push it back and push both of our zipper panels wrong sides together. There we go. And I like to press along the seam first, the one right next to the zipper, just with my fingers. 
And then I'll flip it over and see how like my zipper panel is kind of wonky. I'll straighten it out. So I'll just tug on the ends and clip the ends down to get it nice and straight. Okay, now let's top stitch right next to the zipper. So I have been only top stitching along the zipper tape and I think that's actually just a force of habit because normally when we do these pouches, we wanna separate the lining from the exterior and it makes it easier. But in this case, we're actually not going to do that. So you can just top stitch along the entire edge. So now we're gonna take this bottom outer panel right here and bring it up to meet our zipper that still has that raw edge. So just like before, we're gonna match up the midpoints and then do your best to make sure the sides are all lined up as well. If you have to kind of rotate things and it's not quite in the middle, that's okay. So now let's take this to the machine and base stitch along this clipped edge along the zipper at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Now take your last remaining zipper panel and lay it right side down along the back of the zipper that you just basted in place. And just like the other times, we're gonna match up the corners first and then we can just pin the entire edge. Okay, now let's sew along this clipped edge at a quarter inch seam allowance. Once you have that ready, now we wanna push these panels wrong sides together. Now this is the hardest step of this double zipper pocket because now we have like a tube and it's gonna be hard to top stitch, but we can do it. I'll show you how I do it. I'm gonna close this zipper right here and then I'm just gonna push along the seam and then clip the edges down to keep them out of the way. And now what we're gonna do is we're going to top stitch along this edge through like this. So everything is kind of wrong side out right now, but we're gonna top stitch with it folded up. And as we go down, we're going to raise up the back and pull the front forward just like this so we can top stitch. If it's easier, you could just top stitch along where the zipper is. You don't have to go all the way to the beginning and the end. But however is easiest for you, just know that you're kind of like putting a tube around your needle like this, and you're just gonna have to keep rotating it. I'll do my best to show you with the camera. All right, here we go. So if you wanna flip this out so you can kind of take a peek at your zippers, you can do that. You could give it a press here, but we're just gonna be flipping this around anyway, so I suggest waiting. But you see you have both of your zippers on either end, and then eventually they'll be just like that. Isn't that sweet? Okay, so flip this back out so you can see the lining, not the exterior. Now, I know some of you are gonna ask, you know, why use four cuts of those linings? Couldn't I just use like one, you know, instead of having them all hang over like this? And you probably could, I just personally found this easiest. Now, I think I actually am going to press this with my iron real quick just to get it as flat as possible. So I'm gonna overlap my linings. I'll just do one at a time. So I'm gonna pull the back linings out of the way. My zippers are on opposite sides and the wrong sides of the zipper is facing out. And my lining panels are overlapped. Let's give it a quick press. And this is just to try to make this next step easier. So do the same thing on the other side, overlap your lining panels and then press with your iron. Now we're gonna pinch along these top edges and we're gonna push these lining panels down so we're not pulling them away. So I'm gonna grab some clips and just clip along this edge because we don't want this to be too baggy. So there we go, do the same on the other side. Start at the top and push the lining panels down towards the center and they should overlap one another just like that. So let them overlap and then clip that. Let's do the same thing on the other side. Okay, so once you have this all pinned, now we're gonna go to the sewing machine and we're gonna sew along these two side edges at a quarter inch seam allowance. If you haven't already done so, make sure you open at least one of your zippers. So open at least one all the way, I forgot. And these zippers, since they're so small, they are very hard to open from the outside. All right, there we go, I have one zipper open, that'll be great. So now sew along both sides at a quarter inch seam allowance. If you'd like to remove some bulk, you can just trim this seam in half. And now turn the entire unit out through one of the zippers that you've left open. I know some of you are once again yelling at me saying, Jessica, you left another hole in the lining. I know, it's okay. We're gonna close that up later, but not the way we normally do. 
Okay, so push it all out. Make sure you push out your corners. Since we use those zipper tabs, we will have a little hole right here. Part of that will be closed up with the sides of the wallet. So I'm not so worried about a small hole being here on the side of the zipper tab. I don't carry anything that small in these pockets that would come out of that. However, if you do, you you know might wanna do the zipper tabs the way the pattern suggests so that it closes it up all the way to the ends. Okay, now I'm going to iron this and get everything nice and flat because that craft fuse gets wrinkly. Okay, so you can see whenever you fold this in half, this is how your zipper pockets will look. So now let's look at it all together. So our wallet has three pieces. We've done each of them separately. Now we just have to put it all together. So I'm just gonna show you real quick. We still have to install the other part of our turn lock, but I just wanna take a look at everything. So the card slots will go down center just like that. Your zipper will go down center just like that. This will go in the middle, fold it all up, and there we go. So it's gonna look a little bit cleaner than this, but this is essentially what it looks like. And this is why I like to wait to install the turn lock because when there's nothing inside of it, this flap goes down pretty far. But when we fill it up, we might want the flap to be a little bit higher, see? So now we're gonna attach the card slots and then I'm going to install the other part of the turn lock. If you wanna install the turn lock part now, you definitely can just fold your entire unit up, line it all up how you're gonna want it in the end fold your flap down and you can mark placement for this turn lock. But it's a little bit easier if you attach the card slots first. So I'm just taking my card slot panel and I am lining it up so that it is square with the flap, just like that. And there's the same amount of space on the top and the bottom. You don't really have to be too precise, but just look at your top stitching and look in the top and the bottom of your card slot pockets. It should all line up. You could tape this down if you'd like. I don't really find a need to. So it's all lined up. Take one of your flaps and fold it over as tight as you can get it right around that card slot pocket. And it should be nice and straight going straight down from your flap. Grab your clips and let's clip this in place. Okay, let's do the same thing on the other side. So just tugging this as tight as I can get it around those card slots. And you want it tight because we're gonna stitch this down and we don't wanna miss the edge of our card slot unit because our card slot unit has those raw edges on the side. So since the vinyl I'm using is a little bit on the sticky side, I know it's, this step particularly is going to give me trouble at the sewing machine. So I have some tissue paper here, which you could just use you know, for from gift wrapping and things. And I'm going to wrap that around the edge of my vinyl and attach my clips with that over it. So I'm just removing my clips, keeping everything still really tight. I'm just gonna wrap the tissue paper around the edge and reclip. And that way, the parts of my bag that are touching the machine are this tissue paper and it's not sticky. See, just like that. So I'm gonna do the other side as well. So now we're gonna sew down these two sides at a quarter inch seam allowance. Make sure you backstitch at the beginning and the end. This can get bulky depending on what kind of material you're using, especially right up here. That can be the bulkiest. If you need to, you can use a clamp or something to really press down those seams and get them as you know, flat as possible. You might also wanna increase your tension a little bit since this is bulky and you, that will help you avoid any kind of weird threading issues. So now I'm just going to remove the tissue paper. And you shouldn't have any problem with this. It should come off out of those stitches really easily. Okay, so now let's add the male end of our turn lock. I'm gonna fold this up. This gives me a pretty good idea of how thick everything is gonna be and everything is fairly straight. There we go. So I know I wanna have a little bit of slack on the top. I don't want it super tight right now because we're still gonna put the zipper pockets in there and you know eventually we're gonna put stuff in there. So I'm just going to eyeball it. Since I'm using vinyl here, I can use my silver marking pen to just mark a dot in the center of my turn lock, the opening part right there. And that gives me a good idea of where I'm going to install stuff. So I'm just going to measure this down. That's about one and a half inches 
maybe one and a quarter inches from the top and centered. So this turn lock actually requires two washers. So that's gonna be fun. So it seems like both the washers lined up come to the midpoint. So I'm gonna take one of my washers and line up the middle of my washer. Again, this is gonna be off-centered a little bit. The prongs are gonna fit in the first and the fifth slit. So this third slit here in the middle is my midpoint. So I'm going to mark the prong placement here in the first and the fifth slit, and I'm lining up the bottom edge of my washer with my dot that I marked. Since I have two washers here, I have to do that with the other one as well. So I'm gonna take the second washer, line it up on the bottom of my dot with that third slit lined up with it, and then I'm gonna mark the slits for the bottom washer. Okay, so now this is where it can seem a little tricky. I'm gonna slide my hand in behind the card slot pockets and into that hole, remember? Let's see if I can show you. Remember there's that hole in the lining? So I'm gonna slide my hand into that hole and I'm gonna mark the slits for my washer using a seam ripper and I'm only going through this exterior panel. I'm not going through the lining. And my hand is in there to make sure that doesn't happen. Don't get your fingers though. So for this specific turn lock, I have four slits to make. You probably don't. If you were doing a magnetic snap, you would do the same thing right now. You would just use your magnetic snap washer over that center mark dot, mark your slits, and then just do the two slits and install it and you're done, nice and simple. Here we go. So now I'm gonna try this out. So I'm going to insert the prongs into those holes. There we go. So now I have all four of those prongs inserted into those slits. And now I'm going to once again grab a piece of Decoville light and I'm going to mark those slits on the Decoville light as well. For that, I'm just gonna put both of my washers together and then mark the slits. So here's my piece here and I'm gonna slide this behind the card slot into that hole in the lining and then just insert the prongs into this. All right, once I have that in place, now I can grab my washers and just one at a time slide the prongs through my washers. Okay, so I'm gonna push down to get them as flat as possible. Now let's just take a quick look, make sure we're happy with this. There we go. Oh yeah, there we go. And now it's nice and centered. I know that seems a little bit harder than just adding it in the beginning, but this way you kind of have an idea of exactly where you want it based on how thick your wallet is. There we go. And just like I've done with the other hardware, I have a piece of fusible fleece here that has the glue on it. And I'm going to carefully insert this so the glue side is down against the back of those metal prongs just to protect my lining. It doesn't have to be perfect, no one's gonna see. All right, there we go. So now all we have to do is add the zipper pockets and we're done. Okay, so this is where we're at. The card slots are attached. Our turn lock or magnetic snap is complete. And now we just have to add the zipper pockets. Woot, woot. So pick which direction you want your zippers on. I don't think it matters, honestly, but I'm gonna have both my zippers on the left. I'm gonna fold this pocket in half, matching up the top edges, and then I'm gonna clip on the sides. Because we want this as you know centered as possible. Again, with bags, you guys, you have so much wiggle room to make mistakes that are just never gonna be noticeable. All right, so here we go. So we have the midpoint along the bottom edge here. I am going to grab some tape and tape along this bottom edge. So I'm gonna remove the paper. And then I'm gonna open up these flaps and I'm going to center this on that seam in the middle because the seam between my card slots should be the midpoint of the card slots, right? So I'm just going to center this on there. It should come pretty close up to the flaps, mostly centered. Here we go, and then I'll unclip, open it, and push down. And then just check to make sure it's, for the most part, squared up. Again, guys, it doesn't have to be perfect. Okay, now what we wanna do is draw some lines on this zipper panel. So this is where that small ruler comes in really handy. You can't really see it here, but I can see the seam between these two card slot pockets right here. Remember, that seam is what I'm using as my midpoint. So I'm gonna take my marker here, and I'm gonna draw a little line 
on my zipper pocket panel where that seam is. So that way I have those edges marked and then I can use a small ruler to help mark the entire line. I know it's, it's a little tricky because it's not quite long enough, but that's okay. There we go. So now I have a midpoint line marked. Next, I want to mark two lines on each side of that midpoint that are half of an inch away from it. So I'm just making a one inch little rectangle down here. Okay, so what we're gonna end up doing is sewing along these lines and then about an eighth of an inch from the side of your zipper pocket. We're making a nice little one inch wide rectangle down here, a little box. Remember, I have pretty sticky vinyl. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to cover the bottom middle, it doesn't need to be exact, with my tissue paper. And I'm just gonna use a couple pieces of tape to hold that in place. I don't wanna sew over the tape, but I want the tissue paper to stay in place so I don't have any sticking issues when I'm sewing. So now we're gonna to go to the sewing machine. We're gonna sew along these outer edges, not that midpoint line, we want that to just disappear. But we're gonna sew along these outer edges, right along them, and then about an eighth or a quarter of an inch from the edge here. Do your, do your best to keep everything straight. I always have this line right here be a little angled. It's not that noticeable, especially if your bobbin thread is a similar color as your vinyl, but do your best here to keep this straight. Okay, so you can see we have that stitched on. It looks good here. All of that marking will erase on its own. I'm gonna use the tape here. See how, how wonky we made this over here. All right, that rectangle actually isn't too bad. And the nice thing about that rectangle, what it does is it creates a nice firm bottom, right? So you don't just have it puckering in the middle. It's like a nice flat rectangular bottom. I like that. Okay, so now all three pieces are attached. Now what we do is we just have to wrap around those zipper pockets. So we are going to make some marks. Oh, that's funny, look at that. Look at that, do you see that? <laughs> I left the cap off and now I got a little bubble. Can you see that? So we're gonna measure from this bottom corner of our little flap here, three and a half inches up towards the curve. So I'm just using my three and a half inch grid mark right here on my ruler down in that crease and then I'm just rotating this until the top corner of my ruler is on the edge of the flap. And then I'm just gonna make a mark with my marker. Do the same thing on the other side, three and a half inches from the seam down here on the flap all the way up on that dome, there you go. Now, from this top right corner of our rectangle that we stitched, we're gonna line up our ruler along that corner and then up to meet that mark and then we're just gonna draw a line. Again, I'm using a fabric marker here that erases, okay? On the other side, we're gonna go to the top left corner of the rectangle that we drew and mark all the way up to that line. This is why this little ruler is so handy. Using like a six inch by 12 inch ruler here would be kind of a pain. There we go. So now we have these markings. Let's do the same thing on the other side, on your other flap. Now we're gonna lift up one of our zipper pocket panels, just like this. Might wanna press on that a little bit just to get a nice crisp fold there. And then where this drawn line is, we're gonna wrap it around the edge of the zipper. So what you can do is you can just kind of pinch it on the vinyl right at the tip there, and then just pinch along the entire side to get a nice crease, and then just wrap it around your pocket just like that. And if the pocket doesn't come all the way up to the top, that's fine. So once you have that pinched, grab a clip to clip it in place. Let's do it again with the other pocket. So I'm gonna kind of press this pocket up a bit and then I'm gonna pinch just along that line before I even hug it around my pocket. And then I'll just wrap it right around the pocket. And it feels a little weird here. I know, it feels, it feels a little strange doing this. It feels like nothing wants to quite reach one another, but the goal here is to just to get the side of this pocket into that fold over. And then add a clip, there we go. Let's do this on the other side as well. And since we did our zippers and our zipper tabs shorter, so they don't reach all the way to the end, this right here shouldn't be too bulky. I mean, it's not the thinnest thing in the world, 
but it shouldn't be really, really bulky like it is if your zippers extend all the way to the edges. All right, so here's what it looks like. That looks nice, doesn't it? Okay, so in the pattern, she suggests sewing along these creases. Understand that you're not gonna get all the way down to the bottom, that's okay. You're mostly just concerned about the top half, really. I mean, as far as you can go, maybe the top three quarters of it, top stitching along that to close this up really nicely. If you did the zippers, like I suggested, with you know the zipper kind of being shorter than the whole panel, um, this should be doable. It shouldn't be super difficult with bulk. I highly, highly encourage you to use rivets here though, if you can. I love the look of it and it's just so much easier. So I'm gonna show you how to do the rivets. So my measurement on where I put my rivets changes based on the wallet. Sometimes these pockets are a little bit higher, sometimes they're a little bit lower. So the goal is you have to get the rivet through the exterior, both sides of the exterior fold here, and also through that zipper pocket. That's the whole point of it is to hold this in place. The big thing is just be consistent on the sides. So wherever you put the rivet right here, put it on the same place on both of these sides. Maybe it's gonna be a different measurement over here on the left, that's fine, no one's gonna notice. But if they're, you know, one's way up here and one's way down here, that's gonna be noticeable. So for me, I'm gonna go down three quarters of an inch and then I'm gonna go in half of an inch from the edge. There we go, and I just used my silver pen here to mark a little dot. You can use whatever pen you want, we're gonna cut that out. So now I'm gonna do the same thing on my other flap on the same side. And if you need to here, you gotta start moving stuff out of the way. Don't worry about keeping everything together really neatly. You're not done yet. So let it get a little sloppy. And I'm gonna mark my dot. There we go. Now you can use the hole punch on your rivet press, but I just found that when I tried to do that, all of the stuff started slipping away and shifting. And then I ended up punching a hole where it wasn't supposed to be. So I just find it a lot easier to use a handheld punch here for these and then we'll use the rivet press to set the rivets. So before you punch it, grab your rivets because these are gonna hold it together for us after we have the hole. So I'm just gonna pinch it. I'm only focused on the side I'm working on and then I'm gonna take my hole punch, wrap it around this edge and then punch right where I marked. I know this part's a little scary because it's like what if I do it wrong and then I just ruined my entire wallet. Nice big hole there. I'm gonna insert my rivet, the male end first, and then I'll snap the female end on the back. Give it a little tug to make sure it's all in place. There we go, so now we can remove that clip because this rivet's just gonna hold it together for us until we compress it. Now let's do the same thing on the other flap. There we go. We have a lot of layers here, which is actually good for the hole punch. These hole punches work best when there's a lot of layers versus just you know a couple thin layers. There we go, so now you see we have those added. So when we close it, it's gonna look just like that, nice and smooth. And then we press these down and these rivets really don't take up any space. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't worry that the rivets are gonna make this bulkier. I don't think it, they do. So now we're gonna repeat that for the other side. I think we can do a half of an inch in and three quarters of an inch down again. All right, now I've got my big old cam snaps rivet press. If you're interested in learning about this or what I suggest with it, I will have a link for that video down below. It goes over all things cam snaps. I love it. Spoiler alert. So now we're just going to insert each of our snaps. And again, remember, you're not done with the bag, so you gotta be okay folding it out of the way, mucking it up a little bit. You'll get to enjoy how perfect it is in just a moment. Push down on those snaps. And there you go, and now they're nice and flat. You know, the, the fabric, the vinyl poofs out more than the rivets do. So like I said, these rivets just don't, just don't add a lot of bulk, especially if you're using vinyl. All right, now you're done. Now you can kind of smooth it all out, press it down, and then close it up. Oh my gosh, look at that. Look at that, that is beautiful. Look at those sides. This is nice. This is a thicker vinyl. It is a little bit thicker than my other one. So you can see here's the other one. So this one is a thinner vinyl and it's thinner. So whatever you use in the exterior, it, it really is going to decide how thick it is. You might notice that these corners raise up a little bit. You can uh, cover this with a pressing cloth and press it with a lot of steam really well to kind of get them down. What I like to do too is grab some kind of more heavy duty rubber bands and then just push it around here. And it'd actually be best if you pressed this with a lot of steam 
with a cover over it so you don't get the vinyl all messed up. But press it with a lot of steam to get that Decoville light really, you know, mushy. And then add the rubber bands. And then that would probably keep those corners down really nice. And you can see on this one here, my snap was a lot lower than it is on this one. Again, thickness of vinyl here matters. That's why we wait until we have it mostly constructed before we attach the snap. There you go, I hope you love it. Do, 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 do. I don't even know if that's the right song for this. But how adorable is it? Oh my gosh, this wallet, you guys. This wallet, <sighs> they kill me. They just kill me. I mean, tell me, like seriously, try it out. And I love the combination of like a super fun print for the flap and then something, you know, I mean, you can do something wild. We all know I love wild. This wallet is so much fun to make. Let's open her up with our fun little twist lock. Open that up. We've got more of these guys peeking through the top and then the inside. And this is the thing, by altering the lining, that's where you want to really focus here because this vinyl is thicker than this vinyl. This gray vinyl is a bit thicker than this rainbow vinyl right here, which means this is a thicker wallet. But by keeping everything in the lining really crisp, really thin, we really press it down, we have no problem. I mean, look at this, these rivets are great. I just, I can't even get over this wallet. Ugh. I understand why. It has a cult-like following. It's just too much. I know, I cannot spend the rest of my year doing nothing but making these wallets. We have to move on to another pattern after this one, but I might make just a couple more. And let me tell you, once you get the hang, as you can see, I have made, I have made five now, and I'm probably gonna make at least one more. Um, once you get the hang of this, the first couple times are gonna take you maybe like a couple hours, you know, after you get everything ready. But once you get the hang of it, you can just fly through these wallets. They are so easy to make. They come together so quickly. Everything just makes sense. You know, you build the exterior, you build the lining, and then you combine it all. I love, love, love that the last steps don't involve stitching if you use the rivets because stitching these sides here is not fun. Let me show you, let me just show you. This was the first version I made, okay? And it's all quilt cotton. And I did it exactly as the pattern says. And I had a lot of bulk up here by the zipper tabs because the zipper tabs extend all the way to the end. And in the tutorial today, obviously we made them shorter. But then stitching these sides was just a bugger. I mean, I don't know if you can see how thick that is. Ah, I didn't like doing that. So if you have the opportunity to use rivets, I really, really hope you do. I really hope you do. There's a lot of rivet options out there. I'll have a link for my cam snaps press video. I go over a lot of options. You don't have to get the big, big press to do the rivets. You can use a smaller handheld one. I do suggest though, if you really love making bags and wallets and things like that, definitely invest in some sort of a rivet setting tool. It adds a lot to your design, but it also makes constructing these things a lot easier. So I hope you love making this wallet as much as I do. Most likely you already have because everybody's making this wallet. I mean, dang, that's a lot of people sewing these wallets. So if you have any additional tips and tricks and things like that, leave them down in the comment section. I've seen people make the wallet bigger. I've seen them make it smaller. I've seen them make it into a crossbody. I think it'd be really cool if there was some sort of a way to like have a flap that kind of came out with an ID pocket so you could like, if you have to show somebody your ID, but you don't want to take it out, you can just like flap it up. That would be cool. I don't have to, I don't have time to figure that out, but guys, I have to move on to another pattern. I've been making these wallets for the last two weeks. Okay, let me know if you already have made this wallet. Let me know if you're gonna get the pattern and you're gonna make the wallet. Let me know. Keep me updated. And then if you post it on social media, please make sure you use the hashtag Oaklaroots Toots. I want to see your version because I want to make more. <laughs> I hope you're having a great day. I hope you have a fantastic rest of your week. Get out there and make something. Bye guys.